If you're driving in poor visibility situations, especially at night, and you can't see what's ahead of you, there's a pretty good chance that either things aren't gonna end well or you'll be driving way slower than any of us have the patience for and that's never any fun. Whether it's dust being kicked up by vehicles in front of you or it's thick, fluffy snowflakes coming down and it looks like you're flying at warp speed through some kind of intergalactic travel, having functional lights on the front of your vehicle can make all the difference in the world in those types of poor visibility situations. Now, what do I mean exactly by functional? Not just referring to the off-road auxiliary lights being wired up correctly so that they don't burn up and will actually turn on. No, I'm referring to having the lights with the proper amount of degrees Kelvin for the exact environment and conditions that you'll be driving in or through. Basically, it just breaks down into knowing when or if you need amber colored lights to see better in snowstorms, dust, silt, heavy downpours, or even freezing rain. So how does an amber colored light work better in poor visibility situations compared to white lights? Well, here's the interesting thing about lighting. First, to understand the lighting color scale, we'll wanna understand that it starts with knowing what temperatures of colors fall where in the scale that is measured by degrees Kelvin. The unit of measurement known as Kelvin originated from a professor of natural philosophy named William Thompson, first Baron Kelvin, and set the standards to unify many laws of thermodynamics, including the temperatures of light output, hence the Kelvin scale. On the lower number side of the scale is where we'll find our warmest or orange colors starting around 1700 K for degrees Kelvin and closer to the highest numbers of the scale around 9500 K is where we'll find our coolest or bluest colors of the scale. Candle flames or the sunset and sunrise are around 1800 K and an LCD computer screen is between 6500 and 9500 K. So then something like these KC lights with the amber cover is gonna be right around the 3000 mark for degrees Kelvin. Whereas the non-covered lights, well, they're gonna be closer to that 5000 Kelvin temperature range. Once we start getting past 6000 to 7000 Kelvins, then we're starting to get into the blues and even the violets. The advantage of running amber lights in low visibility situations is that they are going to offer a better contrast in defining what our eyes are seeing out in front of us. Amber lighting is a lot less reflective when compared to a white or a blue light because amber lighting has longer wavelengths which allows it to cut through airborne particles much better than white lights can. White or blue lighting has shorter wavelengths which results in more refraction. Refraction just means it's the amount of bending or the way the light bends when entering the eye to form an image on the retina. All those weird face filters on Snapchat is a great visual on how image refraction works, albeit in a digital sense. To put it simply, shorter light wavelengths when driving through fog, snow, dust, rain, or anything else like that causes the light to create more glare and more of the light is going to bounce off those airborne particles and again, back into your eyes. Science, fuck yeah. Another helpful tip is, regardless if you have white or amber, it's also important to properly aim your lighting for use in the corresponding conditions. For use in poor visibility driving, having your fog lights or the lower mounted lights on your vehicle, and maybe even including the headlights, aimed or pointed a little bit more downwards closer to the ground to help prevent the light from shining up into the airborne particles at eye level as much. And obviously this is going to reduce the distance that you're going to be able to see out in front of you. But for the majority of us that aren't racing in crappy driving conditions, I think it'll be just fine. It may also take a few adjustments to get the aim just right, but combine the proper amount of aiming with amber lighting and you will notice a drastic improvement in being able to see in poor visibility driving conditions. And if you have determined that amber colored lights are beneficial for your particular environments and driving conditions, there are two different ways of achieving the desired amber color. One of them is to cover the white lens with an amber cover or stick on amber colored vinyl. And the other is to purchase a fixed amber light. If you're not sure whether you're going to use the amber lights often, then the cover or vinyl is the best way to go as they are less expensive and temporary solutions that can be removed. The drawback to the amber covers or amber vinyl is that because the light was not originally designed as a fixed amber, 
Covering the light will reduce the light's output and will not be as potent as what a fixed amber light will be as it was designed for from the factory to have a certain light output or lumens. Which guys, we are going to be filming a few more videos revolving around lighting as we bring on more lighting companies in the near future like Baja Designs and KC Highlights for example. So make sure and click that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our newest videos. So if it ends up being that you decide on purchasing fixed amber lighting or even auxiliary lighting in general, then make sure and click on the lighting filter found on our accessories page on our website at Trillbuilt Off-Road. And guys, if there is something in particular that you're looking for that you don't see on our site, definitely make sure and let us know because we may not have it listed on Trillbuilt just yet, but we do have access to get you guys just about any lighting accessory you're looking for. And the best way to find out is just by letting us know in the comments below or by emailing us at info at trillbuiltoffroad.com. And we will make sure to get you guys hooked up with whatever you need. Well, maybe not whatever you need, but you know what I mean. Also guys, we have recently dropped some new merch like this zip up hoodie that I'm wearing. So make sure and check that out as well by heading to the store page on Trail Build. And guys, as always, we appreciate all of you for watching and all of your support. I'm Josh from Trail Build and we'll see you guys clearly out on the trails.